Welcome to another MTG Mox Box video, your destination for Magic the Gathering box breaks and more. If you like what we do, please support us by participating in our box breaks. You can find us on our website mtgmoxbox.com or through our listings on eBay under seller handle MTG Mox Box. You can also find us on social media in the links in the description below and watch us play Magic on Twitch under MTG Mox Box. Finally, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you think. Well, welcome to another episode of our uh, top two video. Today we'll be going over our top two for the new set that's coming out, Innistrad Crimson Val. And just to remind everyone our format, we'll be going over our top two uh, for our personal uh, picks. And then uh, see uh, if each other have a different um, pick for each of a slot. But just want to remind everyone for this particular set, we're only going to offer six slots similar to uh, Midnight Hunt. So it'll be white, blue, black, red, green, and also multicolor. And we'll be treating the colorless on the land slot as uh, box toppers, which we will be uh, randomly assigning to one of the, par the six participants. So uh, without further ado, we'll start with white. Uh, Tony, do you want to go with your top two for white first? Sure. So my first pick was Hallowed Haunting. That's a uh, enchantment that costs two white white. Uh, as long as you control seven or more enchantments, creatures you control have flying and vigilance. And whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you create a white spirit cleric creature token with creatures. Uh, this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of spirits you control. Uh, I picked this because I think we had mentioned it in previous videos before, but. I, Kind of like the spirit tribal, uh, plus it has uh, enchantment support as well. So it just seems like a you know something that you can really build your deck around or have a lot of synergy with existing like enchantment and or spirit uh, type decks. Uh, so that was my first pick. Uh, next, I went with uh, welcoming vampire. That's a uh, two three vampire uh, two and white to uh, cast. It has flying, and whenever one or more creatures with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. Uh, this ability triggers only once each turn. Uh, so again, I like this for a lot of the synergies it has with existing white, uh, white deck types. Uh, in, in particular, like, you know, if you have anything that generates spirit tokens or, you know, 1-1 one, one human creature tokens or anything like that, uh, especially if you have a way to do it, you know, on your opponent's turns, that's the potential to get, be able to get a lot of card draw. Uh, I think I was looking at, um, I think it was Kaikar Wind's Fury. This was from like um, M20. It creates a 1 1 white spirit token, and you can sack a spirit to add um, mana to your, uh, uh, you know, uh, just as a, as a mana. So it turns your, your 1 1 spirits into, um, into mana sources as well. But I figure that something like that has a lot of synergy with this card. Got it. So it will be like almost like a white and blue deck, maybe like blue yeah, for so the Kai instant Kar, sorcery, and then a white for the spirits. Yeah. So Kai Kar wins Fury. It's one blue, red, white. It's a legendary creature, bird wizard. Uh, three three flying, and then whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you create a one one white spirit creature token with flying, and then you can sacrifice the spirit at any time, and you add your red. Got it. And then trigger this ability. Uh, this card draw ability. For this right, exactly. Like you're nice. sacking a spirit to add a mana, use a mana to cast something. That's something. Uh, if it's a non-creature spell, gener creates, uh, yeah, creates a trigger, creates a uh, a spirit which triggers this card draw. Got it. So, all right, um, Lawrence, do you have anything different from these two that he picked? Um, I actually picked welcoming vampire as well because <laughs> it works very well with Edgar. Yes, it does. Uh, because Edgar oh, gets about the 1-1 one, one vampire whenever any vampire ETBs. So any vampire ETBs, usually it's a 1-1, one, one, which is less than 2. So I get to draw another card. Which... Cut, cut, yeah. cut. <laughs> <It's> great. <laughs> um, besides that, though, I, I didn't find actually that the actual set um, white cards that interesting. But I did. I do like the commander card. Uh, from the set called Wedding Ring. It's an artifact. Um, when Wedding Ring's ETBs, if it was cast, target opponents create a token that's a copy of it. 
Whenever an opponent who controls an artifact named Redding Wing draws a card during their turn, you draw a card. <laughs> Whenever an opponent who controls an artifact named Redding Wing gains life during their turn, you gain that much life. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you're playing against life gain deck, <laughs> you give a Redding Wing to that person. <laughs> why, why are you looking at me, man? <laughs> <laughs> Just say All right. Do we need to clarify for our uh, audience about the commander set? So you're saying Redding Wing Ring is a card that's not going to be part of, uh, I guess, our regular draft booster box? So, so it wouldn't be part of our draft boosters, but it is possible to pull that card in the set boosters and the collector boosters. So. Got it. But normally you can find this card in the collector pre-con decks, but you can also get them in the set and the collector. Right? You know, that's... I had a question about that. I'm not quite sure because depending on how what colors the, the pre-con decks were, they mm -hmm. may or may not show up. Got it. Okay. This this should be in the pre-con deck. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, know. I just haven't seen the all the deck lists. Deck. They, they haven't reviewed everything. Right, yeah, because it's still in the process. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, just let everyone know that we, although we picked wet, wet, uh, Redding Ring. <laughs> Dang, I can't speak today. <laughs> wedding Ring, but it's part of, uh, you can get this in potentially in the set or the collector set. Correct. So um, just let everyone know. All right, well, so I picked Hollowed Haunting as well. Because uh, I think why. folks probably know already, I have enchantment deck. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as long as I control seven or more enchantments, creatures I have control has flying vigilance. Uh, whenever I cast enchantment, I get to create a white spirit cler uh, cleric creature token with power equal to the number of spirits I control. So, uh, if I add this in my you know enchantment deck, as this will give my creatures both offense and defense abilities, right? And additional creature generation. So, I think it's a good fit. The next card I picked was Voice of the Blessed. 2-2 uh, to cast, 2-2 two, two, uh, Spirit Cleric. When you gain light, put a plus one plus a counter on it. When it has four counters, it has flying and vigilance. If it has ten or more, it's indestructible. So it fits the, uh, my Cleric life gaining deck's theme. So I think it will be a nice addition. Hmm. All right. So uh, next, let's move on to blue. Lawrence, you want to start first? All right. I pick Necro Duality Enchantment. I don't even play zombie, but this card is so good. Uh, whenever a non-token zombie ETVs under your control, create a token copy of that creature. It's 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 enough said, right? Enough said. <laughs> like, Dumpling season <laughs> for zombies only. For zombies only. Non-token zombies cast. only. Non-token zombies. And blue has ways to make everything zombie. Yeah, a lot of zombies. Yeah, right. Very nice. Like I'm I'm scared of this card actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, the second, I pre-ordered one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Stop. Second one I picked is Hallbreaker Horror. Oh yeah, that's it reminds one. me of Hall Breacher. <laughs> not, not quite as mean. No, not quite as mean at all. Uh, pretty hard to cast. Five blue blue. It's a Kraken Horror. Can't be countered. Uh, you can flash it in. Because you when you flash it in, you can choose either return target spell you don't control to its owner hand. Or return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So it's kind of like a counter, but um, really hard to cast. <laughs> hey, but 7-8, man. Yeah, it's, it's pretty a fatty big. Kraken. Well, I'm definitely thinking that people are, that play like Storm-type decks or something are definitely going to try to abuse this card. Somehow cheat the creature out, right, without paying the casting cost. Well, yeah, one, I mean, well, once this is out, I mean, any kind of like low-cost spell that they can just cast oh, storm over under here. It. Yeah, like... Yeah, and just build up like a storm count or something like that, and then you can, you know, return a whole bunch of uh, spells or non-land permanents. I, I think it's that second one, returning target non-land permanents to its owner's hand is going to be pretty mean if your storm count is already like, you know, 10 or higher. I didn't even think about that. Oh, yeah. man. Scary. Why are you so evil, man? <laughs> All right, well, well, well you guys. <laughs> All right, well, go ahead, Tony. Uh, let's see. I started with Mirror Hall Mimic. So that's uh, three blue for a spirit, zero zero spirit, that enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types. Uh, so you know, blue always has these type of clone effects, um, and I was, I'm always a big fan of those, just you know, because I guess I tend to face opponents that have stronger creatures than me. But uh, what I also like about this one is it has that disturb uh, effect or disturb ability, right, where you can pay three blue blue and then you can cast this card from your graveyard transformed uh, for its disturb cost. Then it comes in as Ghastly Mimicry, uh, which is enchantment aura, uh, enchanting a creature, 
and at the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of enchanted creature, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types. Um, of course, if that dies, then uh, of, uh, if this enchantment uh, goes to the graveyard, then it gets exiled. So, but it's already you know you're already getting a second benefit if you've already had the mimic come in and die, and then you bring it back for its disturb cost. And, and it, what it read like to me was almost like a, what was it, Helm of the Hosts. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I guess or without Blade that whole non-legendary yeah. craw- uh, clause, but still, you know, you're getting a token copy of, uh, you know, whatever the best creature is. Hmm. And it doesn't look like it has to enchant your creature either. So you're saying if I put this on a Scarecrow, <laughs> that, that works pretty well then. Well, why? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> right. All right. V- veto. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. But what happens when it goes from like, because it still has the nightbound daybound thing, right? What no, happens? this one oh, is this, not. This, this is just a oh. disturb cost. So, so it, yeah, so the card has to have the nightbound or daybound, I guess, ability or mechanic in mm-hmm. the text box oh. for it to be impacted by. So, so that this symbol one, doesn't mean anything. Well, this it. that symbol basically just means that there's two I sides guess, of the two card. Sides two sides of the card. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. To fit this whole industry. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because this the, one, if it goes away, it's, it just exiles, or you yeah, don't. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Besides Edgar. Because Edgar actually turns back into Edgar. Which we'll talk about. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure. So I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, yeah. we'll get there. All right. Anyway, so that, that was my first pick. So my second pick was Consuming Tide. So this was a uh, uh, sorcery, two blue blue, and each player chooses a non-land permanent they control and return all non-land permanents not chosen this way to their owner's hands. Then you draw a card for each opponent who has more cards in their hand than you. What? So... I, I mean, you know, everyone already knows about Cyclonic Rifts, yeah, what which the, is really, really one-sided. What the deuce? This one, I I feel like, is a slightly more fair version, right? Because you're you're bouncing your own things, too. <laughs> it's not as cruel. It's not as cruel. <laughs> but, but if your board state isn't all that strong, and your opponents have pretty strong board states, they're going to end up with more cards in, you know, in their hands, which allows you to draw more cards to catch up as well. Right. And it's, you know, it's not that, that's four CMC cards, so you, you, you can potentially still have mana left over to kind of rebuild faster than your opponents can. So you're saying choose Urza and return <laughs> everything else. Wow. Exactly, <laughs> well, then, yeah. Well, hopefully once you, once you balance everything, then you have a way to destroy that Urza, too. Shut and then up. cycle, you know, wheel, wheel away everyone's hand or something like that. I don't know. There, there's, there's things that you can do with it. It just seems like an interesting card. So that was my second pick. Nice. All right. All right. So uh, I was assuming uh, someone was going to pick Necro Reality, so I didn't pick that because um, <laughs> yeah, I think I it's a given. Yeah. That's a good one. So uh, the first one I picked was Patchwork Crawler, which kind of fits the whole zombie thing. One, uh, one blue to cast one two zombie horror and two and a blue exile target creature from your graveyard and put a plus one plus one counter on Patchwork, and Patchwork gains all the activated abilities of exile creature cards. So. Um, I'm going to nickname this guy uh, Peter Petrelli. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, next one I uh, picked is Giralf, uh, Visionary Stitcher. A two and a blue to cast. Uh, Legendary Human Wizard. So uh, it gives all zombies uh, you control with flying. And you can pay one blue, tap a sack, a non-token creature you control. To create a X, uh, sorry, a XX blue zombie where X is a sack creature's toughness. So zombie decks now generally have graveyard recursions, so it should pair very well with Necro Duality. So you bring it back. Uh, sorry, you sack the token as the creature, and then you bring it back somehow. Then you cast it again, and Necro Duality, you get another copy of it. So yep. basically, you keep the copy and you sack the the non-token one to uh to generate more creature more zombie. That's so wrong, That's man. Good combination yeah. right there. I, I swear this Innistrad set is more zombie than Werewolf and Vampires, man. Yeah, zombies. Yeah, yeah. There definitely seems to be a lot of zombie support. Yeah. Zombies shouldn't fly. That's I'm not wrong. complaining. I'm not complaining. All right. Maybe uh, they're being thrown or something. <laughs> like, uh, Maybe those... they're like the World War Z zombies. So. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Play a song. Sing some music and they'll, they'll crawl up. All right. So uh, next we have Black. So I'll start. Yeah. Uh, I have... The first pick I have is Graph Reaver. It's a one and a black to cast three three zombie warrior again with a zombie theme. Uh, a zombie warrior with exploit. If you do exploit it, you can destroy target planeswalker. At the beginning of your upkeep, it deals one damage to you. It's a cheap zombie for early gameplay. It also ha- add a benefit of target removal when needed. So it's a versatile creature and is uh, pretty welcome in zombie deck. 
Uh, next one I have is another zombie. <laughs> Uh, two and a black to cast three one zombie. Whenever headless rider or another non-token zombie dies, create a two two black zombie token. This pairs well with Gerald, uh, the visionary stitcher, for a nice trigger uh, benefit. So good. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lawrence, you want to go next? Sure. I pick Toxrail the corrosive. Oh yes. The crazy slug. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning of each end step, not just yours. <laughs> Put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. Creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one for each slime counter on them. So they're slowly dying. And whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, create a 1-1 black slug creature token. So you get more slug. So gross. <laughs> uh, and you can also, as if that's not enough, you can play a blue and a black, sack a slug, draw a card. <laughs> Oh man, I didn't even read that. It was the end of each end of step. So good. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> so it just slowly kills your creature. But it is seven to cast, so. It's true. But then it, it's, it's black, black yeah. with ways to reanimate. You just you know, sack it. There's definitely ways to sneak this guy out. Yeah. And then uh, just make sure you have somewhere to proliferate. Kill them yeah. quicker. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the second one I picked is Henrika Dom, Dom and Nathy. Uh, it's a legendary vampire. Flying uh, at the beginning of the combat of your turn, choose one that hasn't been chosen. Each player sack a creature. You draw a card and you lose one life, or you get to transform Henrika to the other side, which is Infernal Seer. The other side is a three-four vampire creature, flying Death Touch Lifelink, and you get to pay one black black. Each creature you control with flying Death Touch. And or lifelink gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn. So I just thought this creature is very versatile, works so well with vampires. Um and and yeah, I mean it fits right in my deck. So <laughs> No, your deck is too full. Oh, you shouldn't man. put it in. You know one hundred and one cards is legal, right? <laughs> Cyborg. Cyborg. <laughs> oh, All, right. <laughs> All, right. All right. Next, uh, go ahead, Tony. Alright, uh let's see. My picks. I start with uh, Blood Vial Purveyor. So this is a 5-6 vampire uh, for 2 black black. So 4 mana for 5-6 vampire with flying and trample. Man, we've come a long way from, uh, was it Jazam Jin from Arabian Nights? So th that was a uh, same mana cost for 5-5 five, five flyer. That did damage <laughs> to you every turn. That, that was like... Oh, you, oh, well, Mahamoti Jin was like that yeah, too, well, right? Well, but Mahamoti was four, uh, six to cast. Yeah, six to cast. Yeah. Five, six, flying, and just flying, man. Yeah. No trample. <laughs> that no definitely shows no signs of power creep. No huh? Anyway, so this guy has flying, trample, and whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player creates a blood token. Uh, so blood token is new for this set. It's an artifact with one tap and discard a card, and you sacrifice this artifact to draw a card. Um... And then whenever Blood Vial Purveyor attacks, it gets plus one plus zero oh for each blood token defending player controls. So this is a way for opponents to get a lot of, to I guess, let's see, yeah, it forces the opponent to to get blood to get <laughs> blood tokens, uh, which you which technically could be like a you know like a drawback. Uh, but I'm just thinking that there's ways to oh. kind of switch this around where it benefits you. What was that black uh, enchantment? Uh, that when you, when your opponent discard a card, they deal two damage. Milgram. Milgram. What's that? Something yeah, like that? something like that. So that kind of works, right? Because you your opponent wa will want to get rid of the blood token to prevent this thing getting too big. That's possible, right? So right, they will yeah. discard and draw another card, and that's additional damage potentially. Right. Yeah. If if you build it, if you build a deck that way, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure that that is one way you can utilize it. Yeah, I was just thinking, what what else can benefit from opponents having a lot of uh, uh, tokens, a lot of tokens or artifacts, especially. And I think, uh, I think Darksiders extortionist mm, Darksiders, counts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Enchantments are artifacts. Right. Mm. So that, that's just a way for <laughs> indirect way for you to ramp a lot. So nice. you know, and you know, red, black, Rakdos colors is definitely. Uh, pretty popular and getting a lot of support from this set and the last set too so i can see that as a you know a potent combo so that was my first pick uh second pick i went with cemetery desecrator 
So this is a zombie this time. Uh, four black black for a four four zombie with menace. Uh, whenever or when cemetery desecrator enters the battlefield or dies, exile another card from a graveyard. And then when you do, you choose one. You can remove X counters from target permanent, where X is the mana value of that exiled card, or target creature and opponent controls gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the mana value of the exiled card. So again, pretty versatile. It's you know graveyard hate. Because you can, it's another card from a any graveyard, mm. and you combine that with the ability to either you know you can remove your opponent's creatures or remove counters. So that goes back to what was it? Uh, what was my favorite? Uh, Dark depths. <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> Not that again. <laughs> so yeah, ever since I took it out of the other deck, I need a, pl a new place for it. So this this might be a contender to include with whatever deck that goes in. So. Next, all right, <laughs> moving all right, on. All right, all right, all right. Next color is uh, our red slot. Uh, Lawrence, you want to go first? Sure. Let me. I actually pick the, the curse. curse. <laughs> nice yeah. curse nice. of hospitality. Sounds so nice. <laughs> um, enchant player creatures attacking enchanted player have trample. So I always have a hard time finding trample cards. So I think this would. <laughs> Be great. Uh, whenever a creature deals combat damage to enchanted player, that player's exiled the top card of the library until end of the turn. That creature controller may put play that card, and they may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast the spell. So you get to see what they have on top of the library. Um, your creature goes through easier. Win-win. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think more than C, because you're exiling that card, so they don't get it anymore. You have the ability to cast it, so you take essentially stealing a card from them. Actually, I thought and it was no. I thought it was a creature. The creature's owner gets to do that, not that player. Um, right. I Whenever a creature deals combat damage to enchanted player, that player exiles the top card. And then. You the, are the one that plays the curse, right? Oh. So you get to, you're the one that can cast the cast it got by it. spending okay. mana got it. as okay. though of any color. I, I well, no, it says yeah. that creature's controller may play that card. So wh whoever you're basically incentivizing everyone to attack this person. And steal the Anyone who attacks this person can basically take steal a card from them. Yeah. Okay. So oh, you're right. It's, it's you're, pretty, it's pretty yeah. mean to whoever is getting cursed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like all curses, right? <laughs> as, yeah, no, I think this was extra mean, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, second one I picked is uh, Dominating Vampire because when Dominating Vampire enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of vampires you control until the end of the turn. Um, untap that creature, gains haste until the end of the turn. Even though this is not a pirate, it fits the theme. <laughs> fits the color, so considering adding that. Um, a stowaway on your pirate ship. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's my top two. Alright. Uh, Tony, you want to go next? Alright. Uh, let's see. I started off with Cemetery Gatekeeper. So this is a... Um, 2-1 vampire for one and a red so pretty low cost vampire it comes with first strike and then when it enters the battlefield you exile a card from a graveyard again more graveyard hate whenever a player plays a land or casts a spell if it shares a card type with the exiled card cemetery gatekeeper deals two damage to that player this does impact yourself as well but you know against the right deck I, I think Th this is really good protection against you know, uh, landfall deck. Uh, yeah, either like a, if you're playing against a landfall deck, obviously you exile a land. If it's you know if you're playing against like a storm type deck, you know exile an instant or sorcery. Uh, I, I just think it's really powerful, and you. Know, it seems like it's going to. Um, it, it has the potential to do a uh, a lot of damage or change the game plan uh, significantly. Just because uh, it it can screw up with uh, you know very, uh, specific very powerful you know deck archetypes. So that was my first pick. Next, I went with Ill Tempered Loner. So this is a human werewolf. Uh, three three 
uh, for two red red and then whenever ill tempered loner is dealt damage it deals that much damage to any target so this is like another version of what was it stuffy, stuffy doll, doll mm -hmm. and uh, was it brash taunter mm -hmm. um, so just another op opportunity to kind of hurt your own creatures to hurt other targets uh, it also has a uh, pump up ability one red uh, it, uh, where it gets plus two plus oh until end of turn which might be useful but I, th I picked it mainly for that first <laughs> for that first ability it is a werewolf so it does transform it so it does have the daybound nightbound mechanic uh, on the other side it is a 4-4 werewolf called howl pack avenger Whenever a permanent you control is dealt... Oh, wow. Yep. I didn't even read this. <laughs> it transfer all your permanents. So now you. all your permanents mm -hmm. have that uh, thing. So, man, if you get this on onto the, the Nightbound side and just blast from this act or something, man, you can pretty much wipe anything or just... That's probably a game right there. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was my pick for all red. Right. So, uh, my first one is Curse of Hospitality. I don't think we need to go over that one anymore. Second one I picked was a uh, Mana Form Hellkite. So, it's a two red red cast 4 4 dragon. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, create a XX red dragon with haste where X is the mana cost. Uh, and you exile at the beginning of the next end step. So, this might be a nice addition to any spell slinging deck yep. for uh, mm -hmm. added damage sources. So, that was a, a nice uh, one to add. True. Sure. Definitely a good pick, too. All right. All so right. Uh, next we have green. green. All right. Tony, you want to go first? All right. I'll start. Let's see. My first pick was Cemetery Prowler. So this is a wolf, 3-4 wolf for one green green. Uh, it has vigilance, and whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you exile a card from a graveyard. I mean, I didn't realize I picked so much graveyard hate. I guess I've been traumatized with a lot of graveyards. Yeah, well, what's the theme here? <laughs> I think they need. I think for for this set and just I guess the most recent sets, just a lot of. Um, but the funny part graveyard is recursion, like disturb, uh, mechanics. They just need ways to balance that out. So tons of zombies. zombies. No, the, yeah. The funny part is, I think you played the most graveyard recursion out of the group. So, uh, <laughs> I do. It is powerful. So, uh, thanks for the notes, man. <laughs> so we have to buy these cards. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, let's see. So the, depending on what you cast, I think. Uh, Spells you cast cost one less to cast for each card type they share with cards exiled with Cemetery Prowler. Well, that's pretty so it's powerful. kind of a, yeah. So it's like a ramp, or another way to you know ramp or reduce the uh, mana cost of your other spells. Um, you know, at, at the cost of exiling one of your own cards. Actually, it doesn't have bad. to be one of your own cards. So. Right. Is this is exile a card? Yeah. Mm -hmm. From any graveyard. So yeah, I felt like I was a pretty powerful card. So that was my first pick. Then I went with uh, Glorious Sunrise. So this is an enchantment uh, for three green green. And then I like it because it hits flexible, right? At the beginning of combat on your turn, you choose one and there's, what is it, four modes. Uh, first one is creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain trample event until end of turn. Trample. So that's your really mini, mini overrun right there. But this is uh, for each turn, right? If you're not there yet, you know, you're, if you're still ramping up, the second mode is target land gains... Uh, tap to add green, green, green until end of turn. So it ramps your one of your lands by two. Uh, your third option is to draw a card if you control a creature with power three or greater. Pretty easy in green. And then the last option, if you're desperate, you can gain three life. <laughs> so yeah, flexible. You know, it's permanent and it has a lot of good options that you can fit into. You know, various types of uh, decks and with different types of gameplay. Nice, so. nice. Alright, All right, who's up next? All right, All right. Next. Sure. Alright, so my first pick is uh, Dig Up. It's uh, one green, sorry, green to cast sorcery, and you can search for a basic land to put in your hand. But you can also cast it with the, its cleave cost, which is uh, one black, black, green, and you can search for a card. So it's either a basic land tutor or a tutor. Another versatile you know, card, depending on the stage of the game. So pretty nice to have. Mm hmm. Uh, the second one I pick is uh, Howling Moon. So it's a two and a green to cast enchantment. At the beginning of your combat, target wolf, werewolf you control gets plus two, plus two whenever your opponent casts a second spell each turn. Create a two, two green wolf token. This is going to be a nice way to generate tokens and also makes your opponent think twice before casting more than one spell each turn. Very nice. Yep. So Very good for wolf tribal ones. Mm -hmm. yep. right. Nice to see wolves gain more support. 
Um, so I pick Cultivator Colossus. Ah, yes. <laughs> Four As green. I assume green. somebody would. <laughs> uh, plant Beast, Trample, Cultivator, Colossus, Power, and Toughness are equal, each equal to the number of lands you control. When Cultivator Colossus enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tap. If you do, draw a card and repeat this process. Yeah, this that's just yeah. ridiculous. The amount of card draw that you can trigger, you know, in a in landfall deck as well, you get tons of triggers by uh, abusing that last so ability there. You can also abuse it with abundance, <laughs> which is the enchantment, um, I believe from. I think it was originally in Urza Saga, but it's been repeating a couple of times. Yeah, so uh, I think. Z oh, Zenikar. Commander? Okay. Yeah, the Xanakar Commander recently. So if you would draw a card, you can choose land or non-land reveals from the top of your library until you view a card of chosen kind. So you just keep oh, on picking land, <laughs> put that card into your hand, and put all the other cards revealed this way at the bottom of your library in any order. So you just draw out all your lands in your deck, puke out all your lands, oh, man. <laughs> and rearrange your deck however you like, pretty much. That's crazy. Um... So yeah, the second card I pick is Gloria Sunrise as well, so we Jesus. went over that, but I felt, yeah. Alright, <laughs> is, is, uh, so which card do you guys think is going to go crazy up? Is it, is it Cultivator Colossus, or is it going to be Necro Duality? Well, Necro Duality, I believe, uh, at, the, at the time of this recording, it was one of the highest uh, pre-release priced cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Cultivators was up there as well, but not quite. What about the, sl the Slug, the Toxic uh, Slug? It was... It, I feel it like that was a little bit five, niche, though, because yeah. that, oh, that, actually, actually that creature type is... Uh, I, I did look up... <laughs> yes. <laughs> that creature type. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't as popular. <laughs> Darn. Yeah. I mean, it, that's still a powerful card, too. It is, so yeah. I'm pretty sure people will find a way to, to include it. But yeah, right now, I believe, at the time I looked, Necrogeality was the uh, was the highest uh, Got it. costed card. Makes sense. Yep. All right. All right, let's do multicolor. All right, next is multicolor. Uh, Joseph, you want to start? Sure, I'll start. So uh, first one I pick is uh, Torrens, Fist of the Angels. So it's one green, white to cast legendary human cleric with training. So uh, what is training is whenever this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. Uh, the ability it has is whenever you cast a creature spell, create a one one green and white human soldier creature token with training so uh it is another three or less to cast uh, cleric so that passes my requirement to be in my life gaining uh, cleric <laughs> deck it also creates a one, one you know token so whenever i ca whenever i cast a creature spell so my life gaining deck has many uh, creature etb life gaining cards in there so this creature uh fits the mechanics uh, pretty well oh man you know just because they're clerics that you can't fit 101 <laughs> cards in there either <laughs> what 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 i don't know what you're talking about all right Next one is uh, Edgar, Char Charmed Groom. Uh, two, white and a black to cast Legendary Vampire Noble. Other vampires you control gets plus one, plus one. When it dies, transform it into a Legendary Artifact that creates a 1-1 one, one white-black vampire token with Light Link and put a Bloodline counter on the artifact. When there are three or more, uh, sorry, the flip side, it's an artifact, Legendary Artifact. So uh, whenever there's three or more of these counters, remove a counter and you can transform an artifact back to Edgar. So... Uh, <laughs> I don't own a vampire deck, but if I ever build one, I will definitely consider this as my commander. To me, it seems like you can, uh, you might be able to avoid all the commander attacks just by having it transform back and forth, right? When it dies, it becomes an artifact, and then somehow, unless your opponent disenchants that artifact, you can somehow get it back to Edgar again. So uh, that is true. It seems like it's always going to be there as your commander in play. But yeah, uh, unless you make it lose all its abilities, right? Then it won't transform. Good, good point. Good, good point. Yeah. Like, Shut up. <laughs> like, like the, 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 the your, 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 your favorite Oko. <laughs> ah, yes. Wow. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> All right. You want to go next? Uh, sure. I also pick Egger. <laughs> put in that order for that humility. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the card I was thinking of. Um, but the second one I picked is actually uh, Kaya, the um, Geist Hunter. Planeswalker, uh, plus one ability is creatures you control gain death touch until end of the turn. Put plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature token you control. 
The minus two ability is until end of the turn, if one or more tokens would be created on your, your control, twice that many tokens would be created instead. Gross. It's like, hmm, I love that for a token deck. Uh, minus six ability is exile all cards from all graveyards, create a 1-1 one, one spirit creature token with flying for each card exiled this way. So that's a lot of 1-1 one, one spirits. Um, Tony? Very nice. Yep, I also went with the uh, Kaya Geist Hunter as well for all, pretty much all the same reasons. <laughs> Gross! <laughs> yep, definitely looking at ways to fit her in somewhere. Uh, my next pick was Old Rutstein. <laughs> I like the fact that he is a legendary human peasant. <laughs> He's one for <laughs> <laughs> you, <get> that, <laughs> <laughs> you need to create some terms. He, he can't terminal. just be a human. He has to be a human peasant. <laughs> yes, yeah, so but a legendary one at that. All so. right, all right. <laughs> He's the one and only peasant on the board. <laughs> yes. Um, so he's one black green, and when he enters the battlefield or at the beginning of your upkeep, he you mill a card. If a land card is milled this way, you can create a treasure token. If a creature card is milled this way, you create a 1-1 green insect creature token. And if a non-creature, non-land card is milled this way, create a blood token. So just value for milling cards. <laughs> Pretty good in a black-green deck that, you know, you will probably be uh, graveyard-themed. Mm, not bad for way. a peasant, right? Yeah, not bad for a peasant. It's <laughs> a lot of abilities for a peasant. All right. <laughs> you get treasure. All right. Anyway, well, I guess, what, are, what is he doing? He's milling cards. So he's digging... He's treasure taking, hunting. He's taking your land for Spot treasure. Plowing your land. You, you. <laughs> just, just curious. Okay. Can we assign a uh, a commander for a commander pageant? <laughs> so Tony, can you build? Can you can your commander pageant commander be? Uh, yeah, if I come this, up with a nice peasant, yeah, I might do it. Yeah, I want to see how you build this deck. Yeah, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna see I'm this. curious. <laughs> um, we'll see. All right. So uh, that it was our last slot, multicolor. So just again, want to remind our listeners: uh, artifact and land will be treated as a uh, box hopper to be uh, randomly signed at the end. So. Uh, We'll be keeping the same six slots similar to uh, Midnight Hunt. Yeah, and then you get the box topper as well, so we'll randomly assign that to one of the slots too. And those are Dracula themed cards, so those are kind of cool. Yeah, that is really interesting. Yeah, it's like card. Godzilla cards, but like Dracula themed. Yeah, yeah you Dracula know. is pretty popular. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can see them. Uh, one of the, the uh, these days they're gonna make a Dracula theme uh, basic land with Secret Lair Man. Yeah, I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised at the, at the rate they're going. Well, the buy a box promo is already one of those, right? The, the, the yeah. Castle Dracula, so that's yeah, that's true. That's cool. Yeah, that one is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. All right. I guess that's it. Any um, other? No. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, we have um, all of the slots for Crimson Vow oh, on yes. sale for our site right now. Uh, Pre-order their ten percent off, so get them while they're at that price. All right. All right. And, hope, uh, to. hope to open these boxes with you guys soon. Yep. Especially in your holidays. Everybody should be back home. Let's yep. uh, get some magic action going on back at home with your friends and family. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you. All right. Just want to go over our inventory really quickly. Um, like I said before, for Crimson Vow, we have it for pre-order. The set comes out November 19th. So um, we're doing a 10% discount on the pre-order prices um, for the draft and collector box we have six slots left for the set box we have four slots left for midnight hunt on the set box we only have one slot left so hopefully we can open that soon collector box we have five slots left commander legends we have seven slots left for the draft box and for modern horizons 2 we have seven slots left for the set box. Um, now, without further ado, let's time to do the giveaway. And I think the question was, uh, what card would you like to see for our next set price monitor series video? All right, let's pick a winner for the giveaway pack. Ten comments. Good luck, everybody. Brian Sattler. Wow, this is very insight. Didn't think the massacre board wipe like creature would be so expensive. Yeah, Brian. Um, we didn't think massacre 
was going to go up that much either. It's run very expensive meat hook. Um, but congratulations. We'll, we'll contact you and send you your free pack. The question for the next giveaway is, uh, what are your top two cards for Crimson Val? Let us know in the comments. Thank you.